The prosecution here today at Rock Island County Court argued that Jimena Jinez already had a lengthy track record of violence, especially for a then 18-year-old. The governor started off her address by talking about her last term, by touching on things like collective bargaining reform in 2018 and reopening the schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Rock Island City Council documents, at least two license plate readers will be placed here at the base of the Centennial Bridge. The city will join others like East Moline and Comanche and using this technology to fight crime. There are also changes coming to income taxes in the state of Iowa. However, many Iowans won't notice a change until 2024 when filing their taxes for 2023. The campaign is optimistic right now as the votes continue to be counted, especially in larger uh, areas like Peoria County and Rockford, Sorensen's hometown where Sorensen has a good base. A high-tech immersive golf experience is coming to the Sauk Valley, and the owners are ready for the community to tee off. Since about the 1980s, community gardens in Rock Island have been growing all kinds of fresh produce for their neighborhoods. But in the last few years, these community gardens throughout the city have been growing something else. Island Speedway in Muscatine is hosting an Iowa Racing Championship this weekend. But be careful, if you blink, you might just miss the action. It was a packed Silva City Council meeting for a few confusing meetings that eventually ended in that vote of no confidence in Mayor Matt Carter. Topping off our news at 10 tonight, we have a first alert day in effect through tonight into tomorrow morning. Good evening, I'm Hernan Gutierrez in for Marcy Clark. Meteorologist Kevin Phelps joins us now. And Kevin, I went for a walk earlier today. It was pretty chilly, not bad, kind of dry. That should be changing here in the next couple hours. One person is dead after a multi-vehicle crash in Davenport earlier this evening. Davenport police say two motorcycles were speeding on Rackingham Road around 5.30 this evening when they collided with a semi-truck. Both motorcyclists were taken to the hospital. Today, children in Moline had an opportunity to attend a babysitting seminar sponsored by the American Red Cross. This class was the first of its kind for the city of Moline and the Red Cross. And while today's class was small, organizers say the lessons being taught were larger than life. A six-year-old boy in Cedar Rapids is waiting on a miracle. He needs a matching kidney donor. The boy was born without a functioning kidney and spent about six years of his life on dialysis. Kirsten Rogers tells us 600 other Iowans just like him are waiting on their match as well. And you could be the person to do that. Rhetoric, Sharon, since August, the Augustana Vikings and Fit Gamer, an esports performance company, have been working together to develop health and wellness programs for the team. Now comes in Cura, a biometric tech company that will use wearable technology to monitor a teammate's real time measurements in competition. Both partnerships aim to further the team's understanding of the physical and mental abilities of their players. According to the Augustana eSports director, this makes them one of the first colleges in the nation to use this technology to up their game. And through video review and data collection, create a plan for practice. Together with new partners Cura and FitGamer, the Augustana Vikings eSports team can record full biometric profiles of each of their gamers, much like how other professional and collegiate sports do for their athletes on the field. According to program director Joe Loomis, competitive video games have been shown to produce similar heart rates and hormone outputs to physical sports. He says this technology will bridge the gap between traditional athletics and esports. It's helping them understand how their decision making process is working. Things that they're not able to understand by watching the game or watching a traditional VOD review. A little infrared bar at the bottom of the computer screen can track metrics like pupil dilation and eye gaze to record how players react to different situations. One gamer, Leslie Pacheco, says it's great to be one of the first collegiate teams to use these tools. It's just really interesting and cool. So I didn't know that there's so much science to it. So like, you know, like knowing that there's more technology that we could be uh, tracking. The technology can also track eye movement. During playback, green circles show exactly what the player's eyes are looking at. Teammate Carter White says he hopes this new partnership can improve his focus. It makes you more aware of things you're not really thinking of. And having that level of insight into your own play, I think, gives you a lot of ability to improve. With a few championship banners already up on their walls, 
Augie hoped this technology can help them establish a winning legacy in the young sport. And we're going to be setting a tone on how that data is going to be, be used and turned into player profiles that in turn can be used in day-to-day -day practice opportunities. This is just the Vikings' second week using the technology. In the coming weeks, the program will phase in wearables like a headset and armband to measure heart rates and other metrics to use for coaching. Redrick, those burst pipes caused some water damage here at the dining room at Blue Cat in downtown Rock Island. When you couple the cost of repairs with staffing shortages that have been plaguing the entire service industry, the historic downtown restaurant could be closing its doors for good to start off the new year. There's a big bubble right here and it sounded like the air was on full blast, um, but it was actually several burst pipes. It's too early to determine the cost of damages to Blue Cat Brewing Company in Rock Island. The basement of the business took the worst hit. Along with the pipes, furnaces were also damaged. On top of that, staffing changes have led owner Charlie Cole to run out of resources. I've been trying to wear as many hats as I possibly can. Uh, I'm, I'm a very trained and experienced brewer, but I've never worked in a restaurant before. Cole says his priority right now is his current staff, keeping them up to date on any changes. One employee says while the closing is a scary move, he understands the decision. It, it definitely sucks. Um, this is like a dream job, so it's, it's definitely worrisome. The future is unclear for Blue Cat. Cole is calling the closure temporary at this point, but he says if he can't find help running the restaurant side of the business, doors could be closed here for good. It's going to take uh, somebody that wants to work here and have their investment that they're protecting every day. Despite the damages and the shortages, Cole is confident the brew pub can bounce back. I'm still super positive about it. I'm still trying to make it as temporary as possible. I'm, I'm really hoping that, um, you know, we're, we're making the right decision for our staff, for our customers. Blue Cat will be open tomorrow and Friday for a short time for bar service and dinner service after 5 p.m. After its New Year's Eve party on Saturday, the brewery might be closing its doors, possibly for the last time. Live in Rock Island, Hernán Gutiérrez, TV6 News.